Good. Happy to have one more scenario? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Your time starts now. A 75-year-old gentleman presents to your clinic with a significant difficulty in passing urine. How are you going to evaluate him? So I will see him in the clinic, uh, take a history, examine the patient and arrange some tests. Um, in my history, I will uh, establish duration of the symptom. Um, if, if there's any associated um, storage, lower tract symptoms, um, whether there's been any hemat visible hematuria, any urinary tract infections. Um, I will <clears throat> um, ask, document the past medical history um, and medication history and see if he's had any treatments for this urinary symptoms. Um, following on from these, I'll offer a chaperone and examine the patient, examine the abdomen for a palpable bladder, um, examine the um, genitalia and do a DRE to assess the size of the prostate um, and for any abnormalities um, on the prostate. Um, I will then take some urine for um, urine deep and cultures, um, do a, a flow rate, a post void scan, um, get an IPSS score, um, and um, after appropriate counseling, I will offer a PSA testing. Okay. Um, his examination showed uh, at least uh, 100 to 150 cc huge prostrate, median sulcus obliterated, no suspicious signs of any nodules or firmness. Uh, he is very fit otherwise, not on any medication. IPS score is 30 out of 35, quality of life 6 out of 6, he is very symptomatic, external genitalia examination normal and PSA which you have sent uh, came as 1.1. Okay, so uh, he has a normal PSA, however, a, a very large prostate and severe low tract symptoms, bothersome low tract symptoms. So I will counsel this patient. Um, my management option will start off with conservative first, um, establish what sort of fluids he's taking, um, give conservative, conservative advice um, based on that. Um, given the size of his prostate, I will commence him on a combination of um, finasteride and tamsulosin um, and then I will reassess it again in three months time to decide um, if he needs any further intervention. Okay, you are seeing him in three months time. He has no change in his symptoms. He is still struggling to pass urine, predominant symptoms of strangury and weak stream and uh, he is taking tamsulosin and finasteride but no effect. So at this point, um, conservative and pharmacological options have failed. Um, I will discuss um, surgical options um, with this patient. Um, and given the size of his prostate, he, the realistic options left for him are um, homium laser inoculation of prostate um, or an open milling prostatectomy. Okay, so how are you counseling him? So I'll counsel him with the aid of a BAUS information leaflet, I'll discuss the risks, benefits and alternatives of this procedure. I'll, ex I'll explain that the purpose is to curl out um, the prostate to open up a channel to allow him to um, pass urine better. Um, the risks of the procedure include infection, bleeding, um, persistence of lower uterine symptoms, um, new onset overactive bladder symptoms, um, small risk of urine retention, um, anesthetic risks, risk of clot in the legs, clot in the lungs. Um, and following on from this, I'll discuss the alternatives, which are millings or a TRP. But I will um, explain that the preferred option will be um, the home laser inoculation of prostate. Okay, you are consulting him and preparing him for horny manipulation and on cystoscopy you find his urethra is normal, sphincter is nice and working, prostate is huge, trilobar creating nice obstruction and on entering the bladder you find a huge bladder stone. What will you do? So, um, in this case, um, I will... Um, 
I explained to him, well, the, the patient is already anesthetized, I believe. This is in theater. Yeah. Okay. So with a huge bladder stone um, that I can see on x-ray, uh, this is um, possibly up to a five centimeter stone um, in the bladder. And so the, this will be difficult to manage um, endoscopically. Um, and so I will consider I'll, con I'll consider waking this patient up and um, discussing options of open cystotomy, stone removal, and millions prostectomy at the same time. Um, however, if I have a high power laser uh, with a, 50, a 550 um, laser fiber, then I may be able to tackle this endoscopically, but in which case I will only do the stone and wake the patient up and explain the findings and, and bring the patient back for um, a whole lap um, inoculation of prostate down the line. So this would be the two possible approaches to this, to, to this um, scenario. Okay. Let us assume that you are aware of this large bladder stone before consenting itself. Will it change your approach? Yes, this will change my approach because um, this stone will be best um, approached by a cystotomy and stone removal as well as um, a prostate open prostatectomy at the same go. So um, it, it, the benefit is shorter operating time and also um, achieving the, the purpose of relieving bladder flow obstruction as well as treating the stone. Okay. In one go. If the patient wishes to have treatment only for the stone and he said, doctor, I think the stone may be the reason for my symptom, treat the stone and I will take the prostate bit later. What will be your choice? So my, my choice um, will be between um, endoscopic laser fragmentation, um, which will take time or an open cystotomy and removal of stone and then coming back later for blood outlet obstruction surgery. So I'll counsel the patient about these two options okay. and um, make a choice. Yeah. Is there any method between these two, open cystolithotomy and endoscopic lithotripsy? Any in middle path? So the um, using the cystolithotopaxy is, is an option where we can use um, stone punch. However, the size of the stone, it's very unlikely that you can engage that with the um, stone punch. Um, the other option is a combination of laser and a stone punch, where if the stone is fragmented to smaller fragments, then a stone punch can be used to uh, break the stone and, and wash them out. Okay. Do you aware of any percutaneous approach? Um, there is a possibility of, of percutaneous approach um, where one can then use um, ultrasound and and uh, lithoplast energy to, to fragment the stone. So this is also an option. So how will you plan the percutaneous approach? So this will um, involve in an appropriately anesthetized patient um, ultrasound guided puncture into the bladder, um, introduction of um, a cystoscope or, or even a nephroscope to allow um, the use of the Swiss little glass master to fragment the stone. Okay. And uh, how, what is your exit strategy? You are doing a suprapubic approach and uh, fragmenting the stone, say with uh, lithoclast and nicely fragmented. How are you going to complete this procedure? So to, to complete this procedure, um, I will ensure maximum drainage um, of the bladder um, by means of uh, a freeway urethral catheter as well as um, a super big catheter. Um, and this will allow um, irrigation on both sides. Um, and, and then I'll reassess uh, the, in, the, in the following days post up, I will then reassess and, and de determine how to remove the catheter if okay. the urine is clear. 
if he's getting well very good in the post op period uh, what will you do so in the post op period i will first of all um swap remove his urethral catheter leaving and this would be catheter in c2 and and i may then clamp this big catheter to see how he gets on um, passing urine before removing it um, if it's indicated okay good it's time now we will stop that um i think you did well the only thing is um, you should remember what table you are in that's very very important uh, we have spent lot of time in prostate and um, whenever the scenario comes like that difficulty in passing urine uh generally we think of prostate and once you evaluate like that you will entirely get into the prostate treatment but this is a stone table and the other possibility okay. yeah the other possibility is infections isn't it uh, yeah. so if it is a stones and infections um even you can tell the examiner that this patient has voiding symptoms predominantly with a huge prostate so my aim is to evaluate him but since this is a stone table i am keeping the stones as a possible for his problem the stone could be in the urethra the stone could be in the bladder mm-hmm. so okay. i will, so i will do an x-ray that's it it's a very simple one yeah, uh, in, yeah. Re- in real life you are correct in real life what you have said is the only thing happening and we may end up finding a stone on a later date but uh, unless if the patient gives history of passing any mm-hmm. small stones etc but that's why it's important you should know what table you are in and uh, yep. no way see you have traveled a long distance almost like 4 to 5 minutes on large prostate management combination mm. treatment whole up everything isn't it so if you have the stone table in your mind you will think about which stone can cause voiding in your mm. so it could be urethral if not bladder and yeah. uh, in real life if, if the examiner crosses you oh why are you thinking about the stone you can say this is a stone table so i wish to keep stones in my options mm. nothing wrong in it. it's very very practical i and think it's uh, very useful that you say that because when i got the question sort of true be slightly off balance so i wasn't sure if we had switch stations mm. or if we're still at the stone but what you say is right keeping in keeping in mind that this is a stone station I yeah. should have considered um a bladder stone as well so yeah so thanks for yeah there is there, there is an, another example also for example in penile cancer table penile cancer testicular cancer prostate cancer table patient may present with uh, something like a severe balanopostitis like presentation and mm. um, we may be led to discuss like an infection table balanopostitis sti ruling ruling out sti mm. and we may completely track off but if it yeah. is a penile cancer testicular cancer prostate cancer table patient presenting with significant infection with a lesion in the tip of the penis we have no need to go there we know it's definitely leading towards post penile cancer one yeah. way or another and similarly yeah. if the same scenario comes in the infection table you will not try to bring in the penile cancer even though you mm. keep it as one of the differential diagnosis just to make sure we are not uh, we are ruling Missing out it. the penile, penile cancer yeah and uh, this is a real scenario bladder cancer so we should be very confident in that and uh, you can bring in uroflow sometime uroflow is quite good you have been brought in uroflow metry uh, for a large stone uh, starting mm. on medication there is no no indication for ultrasound unless the patient had any signs of renal failure or deranged renal parameters but uroflow metry is indicated even if you are not bringing stone yeah uh, when you are placing the spc not necessarily every time you need ultrasound the bows guidelines on spc placement stays it should be ultrasound or cystoscopy guidance and okay. since you are there you can place the spc track by using the cystoscopy guidance the yeah. puncture can be just like a three part or two part needle like your renal puncture place a guide okay. wire dilate it and amp plug sheet just like pcnl you should bring in yeah. the amp plug sheet and everything Yeah. and uh, regarding stone punch you are correct such a small large smooth stone stone punch will not get you that uh, initial purchase but once you use the laser once you get some rough edges stone punch has a role mm. uh, if you want to treat both as you said the open cystolithotomy so that we can remove the stone intact that will be very very time saving and you can go ahead with uh, millins prostatectomy that's the best choice but yeah at this present stage with the uh, level of practice people are doing people are 
trying their best to keep endoscopic mm. so for the stones the best endoscopic method is through the suprapubic tract compared to transurethral okay. so you should yeah. bring in the suprapubic tract uh, in the discussion uh, yeah. for example this scenario your mark will be just 6 because of two okay. reasons uh, you haven't brought the suprapubic tract uh, systolithotomy on your own and the second thing we have spent lot of time deviate not thinking Talking about, about the stone. bph yeah. yeah on bph um, not bad getting 6 in once in a while is okay but uh, if you are a little bit um, careful this is a very good scenario to again touch 7 7.5 because there is yeah. no hard questions to that isn't it yeah so remember the suprapubic approach for a large bladder stone that's the main take home yeah thank you good thank you any other questions on any of the three scenarios which we discussed today no i think i think you've um, given very good feedback um this this last one particularly is is good because um you you can have this droning and the the starting question may veer you off the the table and it's just keeping that in mind Uh, and staying focused on the table so so thanks that's, that's very useful yeah i think uh, what i will advise is uh, try to have a kind of a very small notebook if it is like a a4 size paper i will say for every table just only two sides of one a4 size paper that is enough mm. and talk twice taking notes for example first scenario you have missed uh, medical expulsive therapy that whole yeah. scenario may be a medical expulsive therapy table or scenario and mm. uh, i am very sure you have discussed medical expulsive therapy not only with me with few others in the past uh-huh. so yeah. yeah yeah so this happens because as you read more sometimes you are quite overwhelmed with the amount of facts you have and um, that logical bringing out may slightly jeopardized so mm. have one a4 paper maybe two sides or even two a4 paper maximum only three sides of an a4 paper and have notes stone scenarios yeah uretric stone medical expulsive therapy just in the brackets uh, suspend trial mimic trial just very very yeah. very short notes not in detail and uh, yeah. unfortunately there is not much gap between the tables in the present format but it gives you a good idea to have a quick revision what is half life of hcg what is the uh, half life of uh, uh, alpha beta protein so what is the yeah. normal value so those things just a quick glance before you mm. enter the table yeah okay good thank you good so if you have no other concerns or questions uh, we will have another session in next 24 to 48 hours okay yeah yeah so i'll see you tomorrow thank good. you bye bye